And today I'd like to share my thoughts, a bit my personal thoughts and, and uh, feelings about how you should approach uh, test automation in general. Um, let me start by telling you my first experience uh, in my professional career uh, with test automation. This happened more than 10 years ago, yet back in Germany, when I was working in Hamburg for a consultancy company and I was managing a small project for a German insurance company. That was the first time when I ever employed uh, test automation in a project. And we had a small group of developers, about four or five people, and we also had one tester. And one of the managers had the great idea to uh, use the test automation tool that this insurance company had purchased a few years ago, which nobody has ever used before in a project. And they thought, what we all thought back then, that this would finally be a great solution for taking off the burden of, of this one single tester, because finally we have a tool uh, that will take care of most of the testing job, and all she has to do um, has to do these little scripts, do the bit of recording and playing back, and, and test automation will be done for. Now the result was, um, okay, let's, let's call her Sabina for the moment, okay? It was not her real name, but let's just change it for the sake of the survivors of the project. Um, Sabina started working on these test scripts, of course, as she read it in the manuals. Um, she started recording everything that was written in the manual and, and in the user handbook, starting with the menu of the application. Uh, she was using this traditional or normal uh, record and playback approach. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but most test automation tools uh, offer you the possibility to click through the user interface and record everything that's happening on the screen, and then you can later play it back. This is what she was doing. The team was working on the application itself. They got to 20% readiness, then 25% readiness. Sabina got to 10% readiness, then 12% readiness. The team was already at 40%. Sabina was at, let's say, 25%. When suddenly, the team had to rearrange the whole menu structure of the application. It took them two days maybe, and they got to 40% again, but poor Sabina, she dropped down to zero. Of course, because she had to restart recording all of her uh, test automation steps again. She wiped out everything that she'd done before, everything was useless because she, what she did was based on the screen structure that was there before, and she had no means of changing this whole thing. Um, that was my first experience with this. She could probably still be working on this project, I think, uh, taking uh, or, or checking the, the, the rate how she was progressing with this whole stuff. And by, back then, my first and basic idea about this whole test automation was that this is nothing but marketing bullshit. Um, why was this? Why wouldn't it work? As the answer is quite simple, because we took the wrong approach to, to this whole uh, idea, and we did not uh, approach this problem the way we should have. We thought that this is simply a machine that will take care of all the testing job, and this is some sort of, of magical device that will take care of all of our problems, which is, of course, not true. But if you simply look at a tester and you don't know what's happening, in, in uh, the testing activity. All you see is that she's clicking through, clicking through the same thing again, and from the first look, it looks like that it's easy to record and pay back everything. But uh, I don't know how many of you have tried this uh, approach before. Can you get your hands up, please? Mm -hmm. um, then you probably also know that this approach mostly leads to a whole lot of recorded test scripts that are not maintainable because each test script ha is, has its own uh, um, linear structure and they're not interconnected and it's very, very hard to maintain this. And this is something that I've seen many, many times uh, in the projects. And what I realized later on, and, and this is also only a, a late discovery now, that uh, 
test automation itself can be a very powerful tool, but you need to take the right approach to this. Um, and what I mean by right and wrong approach is something that I'd like to demonstrate now for you from a bit of a different perspective. This is Paco De Lucia. Do you know the guy? Unfortunately, um, he passed away last January, but he was one of the greatest flamenco guitar players of all times. Um, he actually died on the beach of Acapulco in Mexico, playing with his grandchildren on the sun. That's one of the best ways to go, I think, if you ask me. Um, well, he, is, he was the master of, of, of uh, guitar and he was one of the greatest to entertain people on the stage. Well, this is, this is him taking the right approach to this task, right? With the right tool, with the right mindset, with the right uh, approach. This would be him if he had taken the wrong approach to this whole thing. Uh, picking the tool and picking how you approach the problem that you need to address will basically define how successful you would be with this whole thing, okay? So if we, we've, I've talked to you about already how, what, what the wrong approach to test automation is, and this is, uh, I firmly believe that this is simply not doing this by the record and playback uh, manner. Now let me talk to you a bit about what I think how you should approach this instead. Um, I think and I firmly believe, although I'm myself, I'm not a tester uh, and I'm not classically coming from this area, I firmly believe that testing is a very, very creative and, and exciting activity and this is challenging, unique uh, tasks all the time. And this is not something that you can easily do by, by some machine and, and, and just give over to, to a smarter program. Just think about it a bit. And, uh, and you see that what, when you do test automation, you actually write program, you create software that tests another software, right? It might be a bit shocking that uh, suddenly you're, you, you're kind of becoming a software developer or turning to this side um, because some of, some of us uh, see a distinct line between these two jobs, but I think uh, that if you want to be a good test automation engineer, then you also have to become a, a good developer, right? Now, if you're talking about um, test automation and writing test scripts as being a developer, then why don't we take uh, a look at programming paradigms and par programming ideas that make otherwise programming and development successful? So let's forget about all this, this record and playback stuff not just for now, but my recommendation is that you do it forever. Um, and let's consider the major steps that you would have to undertake in order to, to get to um, a really successful and really maintainable um, test automation script set. Okay, because this is your major goal. This should be your major goal. Not to do test automation that never catches up with the project. Not to do test automation that costs twice as much as developing the software itself but to provide uh, a reliable, maintainable uh, service that provides real value to the project. And this has to be done by something that's maintainable and does not cost that much, uh, as you, you will otherwise see. So the first step that you would have to do is, is very similar what, to what you would otherwise do um, when you build the software. First of all, you have to design it. There are some special steps that you have to take when you, when you do your test automation. Um, there is a very important part that you uh, have to design or, and analyze uh, the business processes that you will be testing. Um, by this I'm referring back to, to one of yesterday's uh, presentations about, um, it was I think Stefan, about uh, model-based testing where you would have to ma uh, maintain two different models and this is also pointing into this direction. Um, so you would analyze the business processes that you will want to test and uh, 
define your test processes, but not simply by copying them, but thinking them through and bring, bring, uh, building up a structure that's maintainable and that rather that is rather similar to, to, to the structure of a program than, than just uh, simply automatically copying all this stuff over that you see in the business process. And the major concepts that I've listed uh, for you here today is uh, these are basically stuff that you would otherwise do when you do software programming, right? So you would have to separate your process from your data. That means that the values that are uh, working in your test scripts are not burned in, into these scripts, hundreds of them, but stored in a different database or data source somewhere. It means that you're actually using variables in your, in your test scripts that you define yourself and not just let them generate it by what you click through. You use encapsulation, which means that you define certain areas and certain modules of the software with well-defined interfaces that, uh, which, which brings clear responsibility to the parts of the software. And you also need to focus on reusability, which is, of course, you know, the cornerstone for making software that can be then used efficiently later on. There's one special step that you would otherwise not do when, when do, doing a, a general software development project, and this is analyzing the application. Uh, most of the time you would have an, an application that has a user interface that you need to uh, test, and you have to access these elements that are on the screen somehow. Um, you do this by checking the technology that you have to work with. Yesterday we've seen some examples about working with, with uh, mobile user interfaces. You need to create an application map, have an idea about what's in the system itself and how it looks like. And you need to find a way to access these UI items. But in order to do this, um, you might be using a bit of recording and playback to, just to catch an idea of how the machine itself would do it. But this is the only part that I would recommend using a bit of, of recording and playback. OK, the next part is the implementation itself. This is, this is very similar to programming again. You need a programmable tool to do this. Second part, cooperative teamwork. If you do a serious, larger scale project, that, that it's this one guy will not be enough to take care of test automation. So you have to prepare for them to be able to work together to create some sort of repository where they store all this code. Um, might sound weird, but you will need to test your test cases. So you might be start, starting this infinite loop of writing, again, automated test cases for you, automated test cases, and then automated test cases for the test cases. But your project manager will limit this anyway sooner or later. OK, and you test, test data generation might be a bit of a special step here. Um, in this uh, manner, we are a bit different from programming because we need to, to take special care of, of the test data that we're using. OK, and the execution is something that many of us uh, often forget, because no matter how nice your test scripts are, if you don't have a proper environment with proper test data that are consistent and working together with this uh, um, mostly integrated or often integrated environment that you have to work with, then this will be of no use. You will start your test scripts in the evening, come back in the morning, and all you will see is that all of the test cases have failed because, um, I don't know, the, the backend system uh, that stores uh, customer data was not available through, throughout the night. Um, one very important thing is to, to uh, be able to release and deploy automatically, although this is something that's happening already in most of the cases, most of the projects, fortunately. Um, and of course, you need to collect your results and create a report out of this. Uh, I wouldn't go into details with this because my time is running out, unfortunately. Um, the end is, I think, a bit trivial about this. But my message to you here is uh, to take this approach instead of relying on the machine itself and relying on record and test and playback uh, approach. This is something uh, that will bring you much further. If you have developers in-house, then I recommend that they start working together with the testers that will need to uh, create these automated test scripts. 
okay? And in order to, well, in order to embrace my message for you today, I've also prepared a little video because uh, we've heard yesterday that this is not the, uh, enough to talk about on the factual level, but uh, we should also go a bit deeper on the spiritual level and uh, let go of this old habits of just of test automation. Okay, just I know, I know we are. Just let me uh, please welcome this short video about how you should let go your wrong habits. Sorry. And now I shall cleanse this land of the evil of record and playback based test automation. Now we're done, thank you.